Hey Sacramento Fire, it's Doc Mackey here. I'm coming to you with some really exciting changes coming on November 1st. So starting November 1st, we are allowed to place advanced airways, specifically superglottic airways, into kids. This is a really exciting change. It's one that's moved its way across the state. Today's training is about this. You've already been through a PowerPoint, and so this video is gonna kind of review some key parts of that PowerPoint, and then we're gonna jump into training next. Okay, so as I mentioned, key things. November 1st is when this goes into place. Number two, this is paramedics only. So as you know, we can do eye gels with EMTs and adults. So 14 years and under, this is for paramedics only. This is gonna affect two policies, policy 8837, pediatric airway management, and 8830, which is superglottic airway. Those are the two policies that are changing. And then some major take homes before we get into this. This is newborns two kilograms all the way up to 14 years. Next one is the equipment is slightly different. We're gonna get into that in just a second. And then securing this tube is the same, but it's a little bit different because of how the equipment is made. All right, so let's jump right in. Okay, so on this table here, you can see the three sizes we carry right now and the new sizes that are coming in. We're missing a 2.5 in here, but there's some very key differences I wanna show you. As you all know, when we open currently the adult sizes, it comes with this nice package that has got this lube, it's got a strap, it actually has the tube itself. But on the pediatric side, I just wanted to show you that as you open the package, this is how it comes. So it only comes with the tube itself. And to open this, by the way, you just need to open these two clips and then the tube itself comes out. All right. Now, there are some key differences between these two. Number one is, if you notice on the top of the adult ones, we have these nice securing posts right here that we've been using to secure the strap with. It also has these indicators of depth, which we typically have put for the teeth, and it also has this device to add oxygen if you wanted to through the eye gel itself. But notice on all of the pediatric sizes, you don't have those securing horns right here. You don't have a depth indicator and there is no way to add oxygen into it. So those are the key differences. And so placing these and seating these, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they get deep enough beyond the tongue and so that they get into the proper position before you secure it. So let's go ahead and walk through now insertion and then securing a pediatric eye gel. Okay, so we're at the point that we're ready to insert an eye gel. A couple of key reminders here. If this patient is not a trauma patient, try to get something up underneath the shoulders to assist in the sniffing position. Because remember, kids have got a large occiput and it makes them or their, their airway naturally want to tilt forward. So if you can, get something up behind their shoulders. And then even if they are a trauma patient or not, don't forget about this jaw thrust that you can use to actually open up the mouth. So I've used my hand heavy app. I know the right size eye gel for this is a one and a half because this child is between uh, five and 12 kilograms, which is the size for a one and a half. I've got my lube and I have my securing strap. And so I'm gonna place a small amount of lube across the back of the eye gel. This is where I think a lot of people do it wrong. They actually place it across here. The, the place you need lube is actually on the back of it. It's back here because this part is gonna slide right across the top of the hard palate. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to, then with our jaw thrust maneuver, we're gonna slide this right across the back of the hard palate beyond the tongue and in all the way deep until it until it's seats in the back of the airway, right about that deep. And once we have it in there and we have the tube already in place, now we're gonna to need to secure it. This is where the strap comes back in again and we can use these holes, but we're gonna use these holes a little bit differently. And the fact that we're gonna stretch the holes actually over the tube itself, run the eye gel strap underneath the shoulders just like we would have always and then we have these holes on the other side and we can pull tension and run it through the next hole just like this and we have our tube secured. 
So here's the thing about this though, this works on a 1.5, a 2, and a 2.5, but on a size 1, the tube is just a little bit too small, and so we're going to have to come up with another way, and in that case you can probably use tape. Now at this point, don't forget, we're going to, we're going to place end tidal CO2, and then we can start using our bag valve mask, paying attention to the manometer, the rate, the depth, and looking at the chest as we provide the ventilations. Okay, that's it. Now we're going to turn you guys loose to practice it yourself. Thanks for joining me, and I hope this video helped you guys.